Today we get to see a perfect use of a defensive firearm that will never make any statistics. Hi friends, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Vancouver, Washington. I use Thrum targets on the range for all the benefits of steel with none of the drawbacks. They're made in the USA too. Pick up a set to make your shooting more fun and effective. Over here on the left is our defender who has been out with his friends and you can see it's not super late. It's a you know, weekend, they've had some drinks and they've gone to their favorite deli for a little bit of food. His friend, you know, they were joking around on the sidewalk, was laughing really loudly and this guy over here heard them laughing, thought they were laughing at him and so he pulled his car back around and starts talking to our defender going, hey man, what are you guys laughing at? Why are you laughing at me or something like that? And they're like, nah man, we're not laughing at you, whatever. We're just having fun over here. And the guy says, oh, I'll show you what and actually draws a rifle which makes our defender draw his own pistol and come back up here. That makes the guy run off. Now, according to our defender, he said that he called the, the cops. They didn't respond at all. So 30 minutes later, he left. So they're not even looking for this bad guy at all, but he certainly learned a lesson. I'm gonna play it through one more time. I have a version that has a little bit more uh, on our uh, aggressor. You see him here, pick up that rifle and point it out the window, which makes our defender duck down and draw his own handgun, come up and point it. And that makes our dude run off. Again, the police were called. They did not respond to this one. Uh, Vancouver, Washington, very difficult, high crime rate. Uh, they don't even respond to stuff like this if shots aren't fired and there's not you know, anybody hurt. So we get to think about serious lessons. Now here's an interesting question I have for you out of this one. How often and when's the last time you practiced drawing your firearm and not firing, but presenting and issuing commands? I think that's an interesting lesson out of today's video. Let's get to more. I know some people are gonna take umbrage with him having some alcoholic beverages while he's carrying a firearm. And I do believe that if you're carrying a firearm, it is the most prudent thing not to consume alcohol, even in places where it's legal. It certainly makes your decision-making go down. That said, this is in Washington state and there are no laws in Washington state against the consumption of alcohol while you are carrying a firearm. Of course, you are still going to be uh, required to make reasonable decisions. And of course, you and only you know if you do consume some alcohol where your decision-making ability starts to be impaired. So my recommendation if you're carrying a firearm is not to drink alcoholic beverages. But what he did was breaking zero laws and he did make good decisions. And so therefore, I don't have a problem with it in this particular case. That said, he's out just having fun with his friends and that caused some offense to some random dude. Okay, you can't always, you know, uh, cause that. You can't always do anything about that. But the guy shows up and he starts jacking at these guys and going, hey man, what's your problem, whatever, and shows a rifle at him. Now that is a, an intense situation of escalation very quickly. Guy just decides, oh, this is an ego contest. I'm frustrated that you challenged my ego, so I'm gonna show a rifle at you. That's 100% a deadly threat, and I would have no problem with our defender simply drawing his firearm and engaging this guy and burning him down right now. I think he's 100% justified to do so, and drawing his firearm and engaging him, absolutely reasonable in this case. I think he did a couple of interesting things here. Number one, he draws and then gets down behind cover. I think that's really wise. He gets out of the guy's line of sight, and so if you can disappear, basically, in this particular case, I think that's really wise, getting away from that. Now, some people may not have the flexibility of our defender here to get low, but to get that gun out, and then I, I would say to, to get yourself to a position of advantage where you can be the hunter and not the rabbit, very important. Now, one administrative mistake that I think our defender made, watch him get the gun out here, and then he's gonna go and chamber around. You can see him do it right here. I don't recommend chamber empty carry. It worked in this case, and it's not the end of the world in this particular case, because he had the time and the opportunity and the ability to get his gun in the fight. But generally speaking, um, we see so many instances where that is a, a difference between life and death. I don't recommend it. I recommend learning your administrative gun handling practices and following the rules of safe firearms handling instead and carrying your firearm ready to go. Now then, Another thing I think our defender did just fine, gets up and recognizes, okay, what's going on here and, and what should I do? I will say this, he popped up in the exact same spot where he left and therefore he was a little bit more predictable. It's not really a big deal, but as Pat McNamara says, people are pre-programmed to pick up patterns of predictability. 
So if you can pop up in a different place, even if it's a couple of feet over, even if it's just from a different angle, if you can, don't pop up in the same place that you disappeared from because that's the first place that he's going to look for you. Now then, as it goes away, I, I do want to say that our defender said, I just didn't feel like with the backstop that the backstop was too dirty for me to take this shot. I think that shows a ridiculous amount of maturity to recognize what his skill level is. This is about a seven yard shot, something like that. You know, the length of a car, a little bit, you know, more than that. And so, okay, fine. I think if you have the skill set that, that I would really recommend that every self defender have a skill set that can do this. But our defender in that moment said, gosh, I don't know that I do. So he chose not to take the shot. That shows really good decision making and I'm proud of him for doing that. And, and knowing your own personal skill set, that means you've got to get to the range. I would also say I'd recommend a, a little bit of gun school. Our defender had had his concealed carry permit classes, but that's it other than some dry fire at home by his own admission. So having a little bit of gun school will give you the competence and the confidence to take this kind of shot and end the threat a little bit quickly and a little bit more definitively with betterment for society. I think it's perfectly okay. And that, that simply showing the firearm did the job here. So these are the kinds of defensive gun uses that are not going to make it into statistics. It is instead going to just, you know, never show up in any statistic, but it was an excellent defensive gun use. He was carrying his gun, paying attention to his world, got his gun out correctly, and then made a correct assessment. And even without firing was able to cover his ASP. One final thing on this one though, is that again, he called the police after 30 minutes, no service. He decided to go home. You guys know if you followed the channel for a while, I am pro police. I am pro law enforcement. I think that they generally speaking do a great job and are good human beings. That said, they are not going to be able to protect you. And in this day and age may not be able even to come and take a report and try to find this guy. Nothing like that is going to happen. And therefore you need to be ready to protect yourself. Just like our defender was, you need to cover your ASP.